We're following the unrest and upheaval throughout Iran, where protesters have engaged in a week of protests, tearing down images of the Ayatollah and taking to the streets. They've also been burning hijabs. As we mentioned earlier in the newscast, this, of course, follows the death of an Iranian woman, Masa Amini, who was arrested for not wearing her hijab correctly. She died in police custody. And now women are demonstrating in yet another way by cutting their hair. Video circulating on social media show Iranian women chopping off their hair in protest of Iran's restrictions on social freedoms. Uploading many of these videos online before the government cracks down on internet and phone use. Other videos show women cutting off their hair right in front of a large crowd in the middle of the street, defying the country's strict dress code. Here in the Bay Area, more than 6,000 people marched in protest across the Golden Gate Bridge yesterday. They joined others all around the world expressing their outrage over the death of that 22-year-old woman. The protesters say it was the latest act of brutal oppression by the government in Tehran. For change, hoping something could change in Iran, the government, um, hoping for freedom. Sharia law has been ruling Iran for the past 43 years. I think right now a moment has been created where people are explaining that they don't want it anymore and we want to support it the, any way we can. Organizers of that protest say they are planning more demonstrations here in the Bay Area next weekend. The details are expected to be released within the next few days. And one of the organizers of the San Francisco event joins us live now this afternoon. Hamida Zimi is with the nonprofit Iranian American Community of Northern California. I really appreciate you being here this afternoon. You had a, just a tremendous turnout yesterday. Why do you believe this woman's death has garnered such a huge response? Hi, so the, the reason that we are seeing this kind of response is that the Iranian society has been under pressure for the last 40 years. In a sense, this was the straw that broke the camel, camel's back, the, uh, the igniter of the power keg that, you know, the regime has been sitting on. And we had a, a different rally in San Francisco yesterday in Union Squares as supporters of Iran's main opposition group, the National Council of Resistance of Iran, which is ironically led by a woman, Mrs. Maryam Rajavi, who has a 10-point plan for the future of Iran that calls for separation of mosque and state, calls for the full uh, rights for women, uh, calls for the uh, market economy, and wants a non-nuclear Iran. So in a sense, everybody, all the Iranians inside and outside Iran are coming together with the call for regime change in Iran and our expectation from the international community is that to recognize the right of the Iranian people for regime change in their own hands in Iran, and at the same time make sure that there are punitive uh, measures taken against the dictators ruling them. The Ayatollahs should not go free after these type of killings. The sanctions against them, against their military apparatus should be enforced. And anybody who is helping them in a sense to break down the internet connection, providing them with equipment that allows them to censor the voice of the people should also be sanctioned. Okay, so how hopeful are you that some of those things that you just discussed will actually happen? We've seen protests in the before in Iran. We have seen before, but everybody who is closing, having a close look at the situation knows that this time is definitely different from the very first hours of the uh, uprising, which was 10 days ago, actually, we are uh, getting into the 11th day. The slogans that people were shouting in the streets were aiming the institution. They were calling uh, for the uh, end to the supreme leader. They are calling death, death to Khamenei, death to Raisi. And these are the kind of things that people are calling for. One of the most common slogans is that we do not want any kind of dictator, be it Shah or be it the uh, supreme leader, showing everybody in the world that the people of Iran are determined that they will continue their 
anti-dictatorial movement and this time around is definitely different everybody feels it our family that we are in contact with are telling us that they feel this is the end of the road and they are expecting the international community to speak up in support of the people of Iran and for the governments to recognize their right for regime change in Iran in their own hands. All right, really appreciate you coming on this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for having me.